Now, I'm not entirely sure if anyone's noticed, but it's been a bit since I last uploaded. I will not apologize for prioritizing schoolwork over videos and then taking time to enjoy the holidays and then put a PC together, but this video probably should have been out at least a week ago. Like with the Great Trails binge of last year, I'm going to lay the blame squarely at the feet of Nihon Falcom yet again, uh, because East. I'm doing East now because I ran out of Trails games. Either way, I'm here now. Since my last video, my channel has somehow almost gotten to 19,000 subscribers without me really doing anything for two months. The Zohar may have been actually discovered. We've had at least two relatively high-profile videos in the rapidly growing Xenoblade 1 good, Xenoblade 2 bad give me clout video genre, Proto Jin got into Smash, and going back to Falcom, they got so tired of waiting for the next Xenoblade game they decided to just kind of make the next Trails game into one. So yeah, even though I'm going to actually have the time and the tech to legitimately upload a lot again, don't expect to actually see many of the videos in your sub feed because my big comeback is on a game that isn't Xenoblade 1 or 2, aka the only ones that most people actually click on, so if not making videos regularly since September didn't get the algorithm to decide to kill my channel, this one inevitably underperforming certainly will. Either way, let's dig the hole deeper by pissing off X-Fans with a theory that I swear is not actually clickbait. This is kind of a big one, so spoilers for all of X. I'm also just going to straight up say that I doubt that this theory or any of the sub things within it are actually going to turn out to be true. There are plenty of things you could use as evidence or view as a coincidence that supports the idea, but we have seen Elma in a context where nobody from Mira can see what she's doing at all in the Xenoblade 2 DLC, which is admittedly non-canon to any game including 2, and she acts the same as she always does. So unless Monolith is pulling a really long con, or this is an AU Elma that's actually a good guy or something ridiculous, I kind of going to lean on the side of, yeah, Elma's actually a good person, this is just a fun to think about thing, as opposed to something I ever expect them to actually make real if there's ever a future X game. That being said, there are quite a few things in X that do make Red seem rather sus if you choose to view them in a certain way, and I swear that Among Us joke was not just written because the script has been kicking around in my mind since September, but also because it will actually come around. In short, the theory is that Elma is not an agent of a mysterious civilization who's here to protect and share technology with humanity, but someone connected to the Ghosts, the other faction besides the Ganglion responsible for the destruction of Earth. Technically speaking, we don't actually know for sure if the Ghosts are bad guys or not, but based on context and previous Xeno games, they probably are. I really do need to just make a video about this at some point, but just like a certain future connected antagonistic force, the Ghost Faction seems to be basically just the Gnosis from Xenosaga. The ships they use look a bit like some Gnosis designs, and they have the same effect of being very deadly to life. While Gnosis turn people to salt, ghosts are just partially made out of antimatter, which annihilates all normal matter it touches in a flash of energy and light. The only really uncertain thing about this is whether or not they have the same phasing ability the Gnosis do, but either way, that doesn't really make them not scary, and it absolutely doesn't make them not a parallel if they don't have it. In fact, it wasn't the ganglion at all, but explosions from Ghostcraft hitting the planet and causing antimatter reactions are what ultimately caused Earth to explode. If you pay attention, the explosions are actually ghost-colored, and you can see a lot of ghost craft go down in the opening fight. Additionally, a lot of lyrics from songs, especially Black Tar, are about the ghosts and not the ganglion as an enemy the humans fight, which seems to be some sort of carryover from a version of the plot where they had a lot more importance. The big deal is that while the Ganglion just seemed to use drones and mechs and regular piloted craft like you would expect a typical spacefaring civilization in a sci-fi setting to do, the ghost ships we see seem to be some sort of bioweapon. We don't know if this is autonomous or not, or if it's just some sort of biological material integrated in a controlled thing, but this means that we don't know what the actual ghost people look like meaning Elma's true form is easily on the table for their appearance. We're actually not even sure if Ghost is the name of the civilization, or if it's just the name for that class of bioweapon. They could be something completely different. Just based on the fact that they are Gnosis equivalents, 
The ghosts probably aren't on the side of humanity, but they are obviously opposed to Samar, so they might be. Perhaps they were trying to get to Earth and destroy humanity before the Ganglion had a chance to examine human DNA for something. And it's also important to note, the Ganglion end up on Mira, but the ghosts are the ones to shoot the White Whale down to Mira. But as you'll soon see, that can actually be interpreted positively, as in they were doing that for the sake of humanity. So, some ways things could be where Elma is a representative of the ghosts and not some sort of benevolent third faction are, the ghosts are either good or bad, doesn't really matter, and Elma is rogue from them, the ghosts are preservationists and are the ones behind Mira, slash, they're also behind Mira but they were just using humanity to get rid of the ganglion and make a power play, I'm actually lumping those two together for a reason you'll see later, because them being in control of Mira is the big deal, not what they're actually doing. The ghosts are malevolent, but the ganglion were the bigger threat. And the ghosts are literal ghosts in a certain way. So I'm going to go over some suspicious Elmo related stuff that could be representative of one or more of these ideas, and then explain what I mean by each of those bullet points a bit more. So for the section that I have lovingly titled in my script, Elma Sus, first of all, we know that she brought faster than light technology and the basis for scales to Earth, but it seems like she also brought some quantum computing advancement which allowed MIMS and the Lifehold core to be made, but it's weird that only some ships used storage and the rest just iced physical bodies when storage was outright more efficient. Straight up, more people died or had their consciousnesses disappear because of this fact, so it's kind of weird that a purely benevolent Elma would actually let that happen. The ghosts also seem to, after two years, just kind of instantly find where the White Whale is and conveniently are in the exact right place to shoot it down so that it will go to Mira. Again, Mira isn't on any star chart, so they might have just thought they were going to destroy the ship and it happened to be that the planet was there, so Mira could be a benevolent force or something or other, but this is still kind of weird. The barrier on the Lifehold core is apparently not seen outside the clue system according to Luxar, but the actual Chlorian character Celica doesn't seem to recognize Elma's true form as being something familiar, like from the same system. Even if this clue system is comprised of a bunch of different planets, each with a bunch of different races, it still seems kinda weird that Celica, who seems to be the race the entire system was named after, doesn't recognize whatever Elma is, at least from a picture, unless her village was really, really isolated, which it didn't seem to be because the Ganglion found it, and it seems like the Ganglion aren't from Clue, so that's kinda weird. Also, the other Chlorian we have concept art for looks to be the same kind of species as Celica and not anything like Elma. Maybe Elma isn't Chlorian, but stole various forms of high technology from various places across the universe and brought it all to Earth to give it the best fighting chance. This obviously wouldn't be an evil Elma situation, but it could be an interesting plot point in the future, because maybe many planets are hunting for her now, but she's stuck on Mira, so they can't get to her and then get back out, which might actually end up being good in the end. Back to Sus Elma though. Humanity's biggest hero was in a tandem scale with her in the fight over Mira, and he completely vanished. It seems like he just kind of got flung out of the scale for some reason, and the lyrics to In the Forest actually back that up, but there is a distinct possibility that Red ejected her biggest threat to weaken his alliance without anyone knowing. I told you the Among Us joke would come back around. Don't really think it was worth the wait though. Again, she talks positively of this unnamed hero guy in Xenoblade 2, so I doubt anything in this video is true, especially at this point, but it is still fun to speculate. Ghostwalker is something any big X fan will know about, and it's a dual gun art that everyone can learn, but Elma has a second dual gun art, which is Ghost Factory in English, it's Ghost Step in Japanese. Either way, the ghosts are just weapons, so Ghost Factory from a potential ghost agent is extremely suspicious. Even if this is coincidence, MIM technology and the dual guns probably came from her in part, and it's still interesting that she is the only one, besides Cross who can learn everything, who can have two ghost arts. Hmm. Hmm. Also, nobody besides Elma and maybe some of the trio, Chosan, Nagi, and Vandom, knew that 
minds were uploaded to the Lifehold core and physical bodies weren't there. That means that everyone's mind was scanned at some point, and either they weren't able to tell what had happened, or had those memories erased. Which isn't scary at all. And lastly, the original tandem Ares, which you can see in the opening of the game, even looks a little bit like one of the ghost ships, which is seen pretty easily because it fights ghost ships. So, for these different possibilities, ghosts are good or bad, doesn't matter, and Elma is a rogue agent. The idea is that she knows the confrontation between her people and Samar is coming, they could also be trying to eliminate humanity, or be as altruistic as Elma is, and foresees Earth being destroyed, so she heads out before them to give them tech, so that people survive. This mostly comes from the fact that we know she isn't from any of the individual races we see, or the Ganglion, and we don't see any actual ghost people to know what they look like, so her just being the same as them does kind of make sense. Again, this is a good Elma theory that just makes her part of the ghosts and not an evil Elma theory, but we're, we're getting there. So, second idea. This is the double barrel one where the ghosts are in control of Mira regardless and are either preservationists or are using humanity to get rid of the ganglion and make a power play. These are two very different motivations, but the reasoning behind both being possibilities is the same. If the ghosts as a whole are in charge of Mira and use it as a refuge for endangered or should be extinct races, this all makes a lot of sense. The ganglion would have headed to and destroyed Earth regardless of whether or not the ghosts showed up, so they brought an army to delay them and buy time, while Elma had been there for decades already, getting technology to a place where they could escape, and then intentionally shooting the white whale down over their own preserved planet so it would be safe. The issue with this is of course the fact that the ganglion also gets stuck on Mira, so perhaps the planet itself being a sentient preserve of sorts makes more sense. On the other hand, if the ghosts were another faction vying for control of the local group and were either neutral or malevolent towards humans, finding the descendants of the original Samarians with the DNA that gets rid of the ganglion sure would be a quick and dirty way to eliminate one of your biggest rivals, wouldn't it? For this, they would just need to get some human DNA on a place they control, and Luxar's group getting stuck on Mira 2 was either intentional to use as a guinea pig to see if it worked, or a happy accident that was leveraged for a trial run. In this case, the ghosts being neutral toward humanity or Elma developing a soft spot would make the most sense, because obviously they keep the humans around after they already destroy Luxar, or they just kind of needed them to make sure everything was working okay while they got the DNA and used it to get rid of the entire Samar Federation. Next, what if the ghosts are malevolent outright, but the ganglion were the bigger threat? They needed some humans alive to do the DNA thing, but didn't care about the rest, which could explain why not every ship used computers, and why the Arcs didn't launch until after the warring factions showed up on Earth's doorstep. This obviously goes for the Ghost Control Mira theories too. The key difference with that and those is that they do not control Mira in this scenario. They wanted the human DNA to fight off the ganglion, but now the one ship of humanity with their agent on it is stuck on the weird limbo planet, so even though the ganglion are gone and they have human DNA in the custody of a ghost agent, they can't just get it out and use it on the rest of Samar, or send the rest of their forces in to actually finish humanity off, since, as good as Elma is, Lau has clearly shown that one blade going rogue isn't enough to succeed even with outside help. And the last idea is that the ghosts are literal ghosts in a certain way. This will require big Xenosaga spoilers because it actually goes back to the Gnosis connection. To put it very simply, the Gnosis end up actually being the disembodied consciousnesses of dead humans, so what if these alleged ghost bioweapons are actually the ghost people, and they're something similar to the Gnosis? Humanity is the only sentient race in the Xenosaga universe, so the ghosts could just be something similar like that, but for all the races in the X universe. I believe we've easily been introduced to double digits just within the one game, and it's implied between the Manon and Lin that there are multiple inhabited galaxies, i.e. most of the local group of galaxies is under control of the Samar Federation, so... Yeah, there's, there's a lot of types of people out there, so that could explain why there's just so many of them. Unlike the Gnosis, however, what if the goal of the Ghosts is to just get physical bodies back? This solves the Clurian issue. Elma could just be what it looks like when a ghost possesses someone who looks like Celica. They even both have pointed ears. Perhaps it's difficult to possess a living body, or there just aren't as many people alive as dead, so they needed a way to make more. Whatever J-bodies are, they are not explained at all, so speculation can run rampant. 
Which means that you can theorize that maybe it's something about humanity's special precursor DNA that allowed for the creation of some sort of empty shell that you could easily put a ghost consciousness in, and Yelv and maybe even Cross are just sort of test runs. In this scenario, Eleonora could be another Elma-like situation, actually being a ghost operating a Mim, and the ghosts may genuinely want humans and the other races to survive and hate the Ganglion, it's just that getting a body back takes more priority. So basically, there are a lot of ways that Elma could very easily turn out to be a bit less of the paragon she initially comes off as. I don't really think they're actually going to happen, but it is really fun to speculate, and in the absence of a second Xenoblade X game, speculation is all we really have. That is all I've got, but I had two other points I wanted to bring up. The first is that if the J-bodies aren't being used as the ghost thingy, then maybe they would have originally been used to pretend that more people had been revived than was actually the case, just as a typical government being weird thing. And the other thing is, regardless of anything I said here, if the Zohar isn't directly tied into whatever Mira is, then it's probably connected to whatever civilization Elma comes from, be that the ghosts or something else, because this is a Xeno universe, it's gotta have a Zohar. And that will do it for this video. Uh, I'm gonna say welcome back to you guys instead of you guys welcoming me back because I'm cool like that. But as always, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, you're probably already a big fan of me because let's be real, this video probably isn't going to be sent out to a lot of unsubscribed users. So like and comment, but don't necessarily subscribe because I'm assuming you're already subbed. Thank you either way. Uh, another fun thing is that this video took a bit too long, like it got pushed back by an additional day because I just kind of had a rant about how bad Bose is and how he gets worse the more you think about it in here. That got long enough to be its own video. That might happen. This is a really fun time because I'm, I'm in that really dumb transition period of actually getting a new computer set up because it's built, it's working fine, it's working perfectly, all that's good, but it's not installed in the room I used to record yet. So I wrote the script on WordPad, not even Microsoft Word, which I normally use, on WordPad, because I don't have Office installed on that PC yet. So I wrote the script there. Then I had to bring my old laptop that I used to use for everything into the room I record in to record this audio. But I was too lazy to just kind of use a flash drive to transfer the script file over. So I'm actually just using a remote desktop to the PC in another room just to read the script off, which is a phenomenally lazy thing that I'm honestly really proud of doing. So, yeah, I've been talking too much in this outro, but uh, I got a lot to talk about. But I'll save that for next time, because until then, this is Luxon, signing off.